More mass shootings, more fatalities, and more calls for new laws. I'm Matt Smith, today on Upfront. A view from law enforcement, Madison Police Chief Mike Koval on what can be done about repeated mass shootings and where he says there may be consensus. Plus, who do we stand with, the children or pedophiles? A push to remove the statute of limitations on childhood sexual assault lawsuits. State Senator Lena Taylor on survival and why she says this needs to be done. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Matt Smith in this week for Adrian Pedersen. It's been a familiar cry after a horrific mass shooting. Do something. We're hearing it again after shootings last weekend in El Paso, Texas, and Dayton, Ohio, which killed 31 people in total. President Trump is voicing support for an expansion of background checks on firearm purchases and possibly a federal red flag law. But it's not clear yet what, if anything, he will move forward with, although the U.S. Senate might take it up in September. Here in Wisconsin, Governor Tony Evers will meet later this week with the Senate Majority Leader and Assembly Speaker to ask if there's something that can be done. We have a lot to talk about, we'll see, but uh, I'm, it's always good to have dialogue and uh, hopefully we'll get someplace. Clearly, I, I'm hopeful that we're able to do something around gun violence in, the, in our, our state and our country. But Republican legislative leaders have not expressed support for new gun laws. So what can be done? Are there laws that can help prevent some mass shootings? We're asking Madison's police chief, Mike Koval. He's at our affiliate WKOW-TV in Madison. Chief, good to have you back on Upfront. Thank you for letting me uh, appear again. Uh, I wanted to ask you, as we've seen the images this past week from both El Paso and, and Dayton, from your perspective, as you watch this, both the initial response and the investigation, what are you looking for as a law enforcement official? Well, we're looking, of course, for what uh, horrific lessons learned can we apply to our own immediate community needs. You know, with a city of Madison being a, a, a sought after destination for a lot of gatherings, a lot of conventions, a lot of people come here to attend cultural events, sporting events, enjoy the university and the bike paths, is that we have a lot of communal opportunities where there's fraught with peril with opportunities where people could get high density population targets if they were so inclined. So we try to see what we can learn from the debriefs, from the critical incident reviews, and see what, if anything, we can impart. As you know, and as we've seen in previous shootings, the conversation quickly turns to a plethora of new laws that are being proposed. And, and this conversation of how do you prevent this action while still maintaining Second Amendment rights. Is there some happy medium, and do you have any insight or advice on how we move forward with that? Well, I think that if we look at polling numbers across the board, my sense is that there's an overwhelming majority of constituents who are now prepared to see that there are areas in which we can arrive at consensus. And those areas, of course, begin with a fairly unobtrusive understanding that universal background checks in and of themselves do not mitigate anyone's Second Amendment rights. And I think if we start from that standpoint, we can also look at the fact that some of the items like these drum magazines that have high capacity in excess of 50 to 100 or more uh, uh, weapon capabilities for ammunition, those too uh, lend themselves to a far more mercenary or warfare context than anything that a, a typical uh, civilian would need or have access to in any kind of context unless you were a collector, in which case you have a federal firearms license and there's a means for you to get those too. And then recently, of course, we've seen, as you mentioned at the outset of your opener, Matt, that we have some conversations that can be taken place with respect to the, the red flag laws or those extreme risk protection orders. And I think that's an area where we've already seen, I think, last look, at least 17 states, including uh, then also the District of Columbia, that are dabbling in those. So I think all of these are worthy of a policy debate, uh, let me, long overdue. Is there consensus among law enforcement officials and police chiefs around the state and uh, around the country in terms of whether red flag would work and whether this should be federally mandated or a state issue? Oh, by no means. I, I think we as a, a body of practitioners are probably as conflicted about how this uh, implicates 
Second Amendment rights or the perception thereof, as do a lot of the constituents from sea to shining sea. I don't think that there is, moreover, that sort of consensus among uh, police uh, practitioners. As you know, that's why we only have, at this point, about 17 states who have signed on to something that's equivalent to what we're talking about with red flag stuff. You've had experience in terms of mass shooting potential responses or practices when you look at Middleton and the scare with the 4th of July festival, yeah. uh, j even just this summer. What lessons learned ha have you taken away and what type of response and training is going on as we speak? Well, we're always doing training, both tabletop, scenario-based. We're always getting the distilled synthesis, if you will, of those other incidents and see what additional uh, efforts we can take where there might be gaps in our coverage of protection. But at the end of the day, as a society that has neighborhood festivals, gatherings, uh, church activities, and the like, or when you're hosting concerts, much like you have at, at various parts around the greater Milwaukee area, at some point we're going to have to decide where does that balancing act lie between individual rights to privacy coupled with a, an overriding concern with what are the safety expectations of the public at whole? Uh, for the uh, Shake the Lake, the, the fireworks uh, uh, performance that you mentioned, that was about as porous, as porous as can be as a perimeter. But at what point are you going to make everybody go through sort of a, a wanding process or a magnetometer or some other kinds of things? It, you can't control for everything, so you have to have a, an internal conversation and an external conversation with stakeholders. To what extent do our privacy issues going to be superseded to the risk management issues of could someone secrete a gun into a place. At the end of the day, too, one of the things you have to understand about the red flag thing, besides the active shooter issue, is that can we prevent from a mental illness standpoint people who are a danger to themselves or other and perhaps inflicting harm to themselves vis-a-vis -vis suicide with a handgun? I think we're losing that a little bit in the context of everybody talking about active shooters. I think there are other people who can be saved or prevented from injury. Madison Police Chief Mike Koval. Chief, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Matt. Next on Upfront. This bill would give survivors a chance to fight back. A call for change in childhood sexual assault civil cases and later. We have more work than we can comfortably handle and we're starting to turn away jobs. A big need for workers in Wisconsin. What can be done to meet the demand? Upfront, brought to you by WPS Health Insurance.